An eccentric connection is one in which the resultant of the applied load does not pass through the center of gravity of the fasteners or wells. If the connection has a plane of symmetry, the centroid of the shear area of the fasteners or wells may be used as the reference point and the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the load to the centroid is called the eccentricity. Although a majority of connections are probably loaded eccentrically, in many cases the eccentricity is small and may be neglected. The framed beam connection shown is a typical eccentric connection. This connection, in either bolted or welded form, is commonly used to connect beams to columns. Although the eccentricities in this type of connection are small and can sometimes be neglected, they do exist and are used here for illustration. There are actually two different connections involved. The attachment of the beam to the framing angles and the attachment of the angles to the column. These connections illustrate the two basic categories of eccentric connections, those causing only shear in the fasteners or welds and those causing both shear and tension. If the beam and angles are considered separately from the column, it is clear that the reaction R acts at an eccentricity from the centroid of the areas of the fasteners in the beam web. These fasteners are thus subjected to both a shearing force and a bending moment that lies in the plane of the connection. This bending moment can be translated to a force couple that causes torsional shearing stress. If the column and angles are isolated from the beam, it is clear that the fasteners in the column flange are subjected to the reaction R acting at an eccentricity from the plane of the fasteners. This subjects the balls to the shearing force R and the same previous bending moment. In this case, however, the load is not in the plane of the fasteners, so the couple will tend to put the upper part of the connection in tension and compress the lower part. The fasteners at the top of the connection will therefore be subjected to both shear and tension. Although we used a bolted connection here for illustration, welded connections can be similarly categorized as either shear only or shear plus tension. AISC Construction Manual Tables 10-1 through 10-12 provide strengths for various simple shear frame beam connections. These include double angle connections, all bolted, all welded, or a combination of welded and bolted. In addition to shear and plate connections, in which a plate is welded to the column but is bolted to the beam. Also included are all bolted, unstiffened and stiffened seated connections and welded, unstiffened and stiffened seated connections. Let us have a closer look at a specific type of eccentric bolted connections where the load applied is in the same plane as that of the bolt shear plane. Two approaches exist for the solution of this problem, the traditional elastic analysis and the more accurate and complex ultimate strength analysis. Only the elastic will be discussed in this video. For the elastic analysis, the fastener shear areas and the load are shown separate from the column and bracket plate. The eccentric load P can be replaced with the same load acting at the centroid plus the couple which is equal to the force multiplied by the eccentricity. If this replacement is made, the load will be concentric and each fastener can be assumed to resist an equal share of the load given by P divided by N, where N is the number of fasteners. The fastener forces resulting from the couple can be found by considering the shearing stress in the fasteners to be the result of torsion of a cross-section made up of the cross-sectional areas of the fasteners. If such an assumption is made, the shearing force in each fastener can be found from the formula P sub M is equal to M times D divided by the sum of D squared, where D is the distance of the bolt from the centroid 
and m is the force p multiplied by the eccentricity. The two components of shear force determined can be added vectorially to obtain the resultant force small p. When the largest resultant is determined, the fastener's size is selected so as to resist this force. The critical fastener cannot always be found by inspection, and several force calculations may be necessary. In a connection such as the one for the T-stub bracket shown here, where the bolts are pre-tensioned, an eccentric load creates a couple that will increase the tension in the upper row of fasteners and decrease it in the lower row. If the fasteners are bolts with no initial tension, the upper bolts will be put in tension and the lower ones will not be affected. Regardless of the type of fastener, each one will receive an equal share of the shear load. If the fasteners are pre-tensioned high strength bolts, the contact surface between the column flange and the bracket flange will be uniformly compressed before the external load is applied. The bearing pressure will equal to the total bolt tension divided by the area of contact. As the load P is gradually applied, the compression at the top will be relieved and the compression at the bottom will increase. When the compression at the top has been completely overcome, the components will separate and the couple P times E will be resisted by tensile bolt forces and compression on the remaining surface of contact. A conservative way to calculate the tension in the bolt is to assume that the neutral axis coincides with the centroid of the bolts. All bolts above the neutral axis will be in tension and the area below will be in compression. The bolts are all assumed to have the same tensile force R sub T. The bending moment P times E will then be equal to the number of bolts in tension multiplied by the bolt's tension times the distance between the centroid of the tension zone and the centroid of the compression zone. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.